Oh, yeah. Uh, and got to make sure that you pick up my blue... Incredible model of the world's most incredible car. There's nothing quite like owning a Rolls Royce. You're watching USA, America's all entertainment network. Oh, yeah, uh, and to make sure that you pick up my blue suit from the cleaners, I'm going to take that with me. Yeah, that's. What do you mean the car's out of gas? What? I gave you money for gasoline yesterday, Gunther. What did you do? No, you may not put your hand in the cookie jar. And if you don't come up with some money somehow, you're going to have to walk to the cleaners. You got that? Yeah, goodbye. Why do I get this feeling that the house is going to be up for auction by the time we get back? I don't know. I think I'm going to have a long talk with Gunther tonight. That happens whenever uh, his horses start coming in last. <laughs> come in. Oh, Detective Stoner, my favorite detective. What brings you here, sir? Well, I came to say my... Farewells. I understand you two are leaving for vacation very soon. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, you're going to miss us? I might, unfortunately. I can't say the same for my blood pressure, however. Why, that's the closest thing to a compliment I've ever received from you, Mr. Stoner. <laughs> now, I'm sure that deep down inside, Detective Stoner thinks we're terrific, don't you? Yeah, well, uh, I must say I find it a little strange that you two are leaving right in the middle of the standing elk investigation. I don't consider that to be your uh, style. Well, as a matter of fact, Standing Elk has fired us. Still, I'd hate to think of you two off gathering clues and information without sharing them with your favorite detective. What makes you think we're going to be off gathering clues? Uh, let's just say that I know you a little better than you give me credit for. Well, as a matter of fact, we are going to be uh, searching for something. Mm -hmm. Who? His name is Proud Bear. He's one of Standing Elk's five sons. He was listed as missing in action and... France during World War II. 1944, to be exact. Mm, 44. Well, I wish you luck, but after 40 years, the uh, trail could be a little cold. Hey, Stillwater, check this out, my man. I just set a date up for you and me week after next, a double date up at Wellington College. What if they's cool, man? Don't worry about it. I got you a hot date. It's with Jody's roommate, her name is Tess. What do you mean, what kind of personality does she got? She's one of those uh, liberated types, you know what I'm saying? What? Listen, of course you gotta dress up. I don't wanna do it either, but I figure it can't hurt to class our acts up a little bit for the girls, right? Look, you really don't have a choice, my friend. You just better be there, all right? Thank you for everything you've done for our daughter. Well, thank you for your hospitality. I know this hasn't been easy. No, no, it hasn't. Chris is an only child, and Carolyn's treasured her from the day she was born. She's having a little difficulty in getting used to Chris's condition. I'm sure. How about you? How are you doing? Me. I have my own private hell. Well, what do you mean? I'm the one who encouraged Chris to become a policewoman. Well, Mark, that was not a mistake. There's nothing in the world that Chris loves more than being a cop. Derek, won't you please reconsider and let me fix you a snack before you go? It's such a long trip back to Monticello. No, thanks. Those pancakes will last me all day. Well, uh, something to take on the plane, maybe. No, thank you, really. You've done too much already. Hey, Matt, now I want you to take care of your mom. You know, be of help wherever you can. I know it's a big job, but I think you're, you're tough enough to do it. <laughs> and you two have a really nice trip. You have a safe one back to Monticello. Thank you. Why don't you show me to the door? Is your last chance to change your mind? No. No, I think I'm doing the right thing. Well, I think you are, too. I'll call you as soon as I get back to Monticello. And I'll, I'll call you twice a day after that. All right, keep me posted on uh, Lane Wilton. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Hello. 
Matthew? Yes, this is Carolyn Egan. No, thank you, Sarah. I have all the magazine subscriptions I need. Goodbye. Junk phone calls. I don't know where in the world they get your name. supplies to last out the winter. The kind of weather we get around here, we don't like to take any chances. And um, if the pipes should happen to freeze, which they have a habit of doing, there's uh, bottled water in the furnace room. Mm -hmm. And Matthew knows how to light the pilot light on the water heater. So do I. Of course you do. <laughs> of course. And uh, let's see, have I forgotten anything? Oh, yes. Uh, there's plenty of uh, wood in the woodshed, and uh, I want you to see something over here. My 12 gauge is on the rack here, and the uh, shells are in here. Okay, Dad, I'm not going to need the gun. I know. I showed you that more for my own peace of mind than yours. You're going to be fine. <laughs> you and Matthew are going to be just fine. I love you, Dad. Thank you so much for understanding. Yeah, I only wish your mother understood things just a little bit better. Oh, would you like me to talk to her again? No. Your mother needs to uh, come to grips with your blindness on her own. She's upstairs now, packing with tears in her eyes. It's all I could do to get her to go to Florida with me. But don't worry, she'll be all right. Would you look at that? Almost out of firewood. Remind me to bring some in before we leave. No, don't be silly. Matthew and I can do that. Matthew? Matt? Mark, is she going to be okay? You remember that feisty little tomboy that used to run all over this house? Well, she's become a feisty, independent, Beautiful woman. But Mark, she's blind. Only her eyes. Her spirit's just as bright and strong as ever. She's gonna be all right. She can take care of herself. Come in. <laughs> Miss Van Dyne. Detective Stoner again. Maybe we can find you an office here. Save you all that gasoline. And you must let us work on your image. You are so severe. Well, let's just say the city of Monticello doesn't pay me to uh, spread sunshine. Well, you're earning your money. OK, what can I do for you today? You can begin by telling me where Greg Schaefer is. Your secretary says he hasn't been around in several days. Three days, as a matter of fact. Doesn't seem to upset you very much. Well, I am his employer, Detective Stoner, not his guard. Whatever Mr. Schaefer does with his time is his business. He's probably off uh, seeing a relative or something. Why, does it look so suspicious, his leaving like this? No, not very. His background did check out clean. His name is Greg Parker, and he did change it in order to make it on his own, away from his family's influences. Well, I am delighted to know that I'm not harboring a criminal at Image Inc. I didn't say that he wasn't. I simply said his background checked out clean. However, that doesn't explain where he's gone or why he left. Hey, listen, baby, it's all set with Stillwater, right? Except he's running all over town trying to find a jack in the tide. Oh, Tess is looking forward to it, too. And Preacher, so am I. Say, tell me something. How's Rush Week going? Oh, it's a madhouse around here. You know, I haven't seen the inside of a textbook in two days. Let me tell you something. Don't let that start sliding. Now, that's real important stuff, all right? Oh, well, and listen to you. Oh, I mean it. I know you do, and I love you for it. Oh, and speaking of loving, here's something you're really going to love. What's that? 
Maxine was bouncing around the dorm for the last few days with a smile on her face guaranteed to melt lead. You talk about Miss Prim and Proper? Come on, you gotta be kidding me. No, I'm serious. And to top it off, she up and pulled a vanishing act without telling anyone where she went. You know what happened? I bet one of the dudes from those motorcycle clubs came over and showed her his rare bug collection. <laughs> she needed something like that. Listen, I gotta get run over the radio station, but um, I'll call you in the morning, all right? Okay. I miss you. Well, I miss you. Maxine, I didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> Everything. I'll go and get the uh, car out of the barn. Chris, we'll call every chance we get. Mom, just relax. Have a good time. <laughs> now, let's see. Um, there's bottled water in the furnace room in case the pipes freeze. And uh, your father stored plenty of wood. Mom, and Dad and I already took stock of the inventory. Oh. <laughs> Well, if you haven't run out of anything, there's always a... Kaufman's Mr. General Store, and they deliver. Yes, I know. Don't worry. Matthew and I will be just fine. It'll be like an adventure. Right, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> Here's tonight's schedule. Thank you. Hello. Hello, you too. Oh, hi, Matt. Coffee, Doctor? You look like you could use something. No, thank you. Thanks. Boss, is there something wrong? Well, actually, I did want to talk to you, but I, I'm thinking now you're awful busy and I shouldn't even be bothering you. Uh, uh, will you excuse me? Sorry. There's something the matter, isn't no, there? Actually, I'm, I'm having second thoughts Please, about Please, does it have something for... to do with Chris? I think I'm losing her. How do you know? How does anyone know these things? You get feelings inside. How do you even know you when you're in love? Sometimes you don't. Funny thing is, I, I've felt this strain between us for some time now. I just, uh, I've been too damn stubborn to even confront it. Maybe, maybe I've been frightened, you know, because Chris's being blind has, has made me want to continue my feelings and, and not change anything. I wanted her to know that I was there for her. Mm -hmm. Did it help? Her, some. I guess. But Lily, I just feel like we're going through the motions and whatever has been missing for so long in our relationship. It's getting more and more noticeable, Beth. And what do you think was missing? I'm afraid to even say it. Everything's in place except us. Carolyn, I guess we've got to go. We have a plane to catch. And plenty of fish. <laughs> and plenty of fish. We'll freeze some and bring it back to you. Okay. Matt, you'll be a good scout, you hear? Yes, Grandpa. Bye. Bye. Bye, Dad. Mom. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, honey. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers. time. <laughs> Goodbye, Matt. Let's not. Let's go make lunch. Well, what do you think we ought to do first? There's plenty of chores to do around the house. Now, I don't blame you, okay, for not wanting to do them, but they have to be done. And you are the man of the house now, right? Let's have a snowball fight. A snowball fight? Matt, there's beds to be made, dishes to be done, wood to be stored. We've got to prepare dinner, all sorts of odds and ends. I mean, chores are chores, right? No. And they're not going to do themselves, am I right? Listen, Matt, uh, you mind if I ask you a very serious question? After we bring in some wood, 
Would you like to have a snowball fight? Yeah! <laughs> oh, you are a bloodthirsty little boy, you know that? Okay, let's clear off these dishes, and then we'll get ready for the great outdoors. <laughs> Go ahead. But honey, um, about last night, I, uh, I want to apologize. There's nothing to apologize for. Yes, there is. I had encouraged you to get to know Jamie better and to maybe learn to love him, and I'm proud of you. You've been doing that, and, um, and if you want to fight to keep him, I'll fight right alongside you. What I don't understand, however, is what you seem to be so afraid of. Remember the night after Jamie arrived, I told you about the way I was during the marriages to Kevin and Logan? Yeah, and I thought that we had taken care of that. I said I didn't care a damn about the past. All I cared about was the woman that I fell in love with. Yeah, well, I didn't tell you everything, only the things that I was comfortable with. Well, if it has to do with Kevin or Logan, I'm not No, it has to do with me. I was only concerned with myself. I would let nothing stop me from getting what I wanted. I lied. I used people whenever, whoever I wanted. Some of them were very nice, decent people like you. And you're afraid that's going to happen again? Well, I'm not the only one afraid. Geraldine's afraid. She's afraid I'm going to mess up again like I did before. You don't have to worry about that. It's not going to happen. Not as long as I'm here, I promise. on Greg yet? Well, have you tried his apartment again? What about Shelley Franklin's place? She what? She moved where? Geraldine Saxon? Uh, okay, look, thanks. Uh, just keep trying those numbers, will you? Greg, where are you? to the woodshed and the one at the barn is so clear I shouldn't have any trouble finding the way around. Oh, oh, I love it here. Mom, I missed you so much. Oh, Matthew, I missed you too. But we're together now. I'm not sure what to believe anymore. If Chris said that you'll work things out, when she gets back from Pennsylvania, I'm sure that you will. She just needs time to sort things out. She'll be back and things will straighten out one way or another. See, I know that our intentions are good. I'm just not sure that's enough. <laughs> Miles, what do you want? I don't know. Miles, you and Chris, you're so... Oh. Hey, Doc. How you doing? You're looking good. <laughs> Miles, how you feeling, aren't you? All right. Well, you're a little early, aren't you, Richard? Well, I had some time to kill, so I thought I would come over and catalog some of the latest callings. Oh, well, that's a good idea. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a hand in, in a minute or two. Look, you're right. Thanks for listening to me. Anytime you need my help. W-E-O-N, may I help you? Oh, Judy! Hello! How are you? Good, good. Listen, I'm sorry I didn't have more of a chance to talk with you the other day when you stopped by to visit. Well, what, from what Preacher tells me, it's a minor miracle you have any time to eat or sleep. Well, if I do, it is because of Preacher. He's been wonderful. I really don't know what I would have done without him. Is he there by any chance? I've been calling all over town trying to find him. Yes, you're in luck. As a matter of fact, he is. Hold on one second. Preacher, it's Jody on the phone. Hey, baby, how you doing? Well, <laughs> I don't know for sure. You 
see it's Maxine. Well, you know what I was joking with you this morning about her? I didn't know the whole story. Well, people are now saying it doesn't look like she's run off with someone. She's just disappeared. Carolyn Egan. No, we don't want any magazine subscription. I thought Miss I thought Mrs. Egan told you that this morning. 